In problem 43, I proved the law of iterated expectations, this expression. And now we're going to apply it. This problem here is taken from Ross's book. You can read it because I'm not going to solve this one. I'm going to solve something which is a, a modified problem. So say a cat faces three doors. It's not a very interesting story. Um, the game ends if cat picks this door one. And if the pick cat does not pick door one, either two or three, then the cat has to try again. So it goes through with the doors, wanders around to some point, comes back. The thing about this game though is that the selections of the doors are independent of the previous choices. So if the cat went and picked either door three and went around and came back facing three doors again, it would forget it would kind of forget what had happened uh, previously. Probability of picking door one is p, not picking door one is one minus p, where p is the probability of picking door one. We want to find the the mean number of attempts to pick door one. I what's the kind of uh, mean number of goes before the game ends? So let x denote the number of attempts to pick door one, then we want to find expectation of x. Okay, two methods then. Method one, without using the law of iterated expectations, let's do it directly. So x being the number of goes is a discrete random variable, so we the formula for expectations is this. And just let's write out uh, the probability mass function for x to try to understand if there's a pattern. So if the game ends on the first go, so it picks Dolman straight away, that's probability of P. How about if it picks on the second go? Well, that means on the first go, it doesn't pick door one and picks it on the second one. And so it's this expression, it doesn't pick door one on the first go and then picks door one. So here I've used the this result by independence, these two events, A and B, is just product of the, of the marginals. And it's going to be the same story as for uh, door three. So that means on the first two goes does not pick door one and picks it on the third go. So it's this does not pick probability pick door one power two and then picks door one. And you can see the pattern. So like for the kth go, k minus one like fails to pick door one and then succeeds all right so this x actually is what we call a geometric for the geometric distribution that's something like a number of trials until a first success if you've studied this thing anyway we didn't even have to we don't have to know this uh, for this problem but you see the pattern so let's plug in the numbers look so for so having the table now that mean number is that times that plus this times that i.e. the sum of the outcomes times the associated probability and you can see it's infinite because it can go on indefinitely hopefully the cat will still be alive and until it finally picks the door and look at the expression here it's got a common factor of p so we can take that as a common factor and then add this thing up now this here is going to be this how do I know that Okay, let's shift over here. We use the results, the following result. So let's say it's, a, it's an infinite geometric uh, progression. So let's say this number here, absolute value is less than one, then one plus a plus a squared plus da da infinity is equal to this, which is a result we learned from school. Now, differentiate both sides of this thing with respect to a and you can see the result from straight away so this is this here is done by the chain rule okay this one one this one two a and so on so if you didn't know that that's a nice another nice little expression just from the basic result that we learned from school about the uh, sum of a geometric progression of an infinite geometric progression okay terms cancel one over p is the answer the mean number of attempts. Well does that kind of make sense? 
Well, for the doors that are equally likely to be, to be picked, then P is a third, because we've got three doors, in which case the mean is mean number of goes is 3, which makes sense. Now, let's do the thing, repeat the thing, but using the law of iterated expectations. Here's the expression. We are here conditioning it on A being the A being the door picked. And A can partition A1, A2, where A1 stands for door 1 is picked, A2 stands for 1 is not picked. So A1 and A2 form a partition of A. Then writing out what this actually means in this case, it's this. So it's is this type of uh, door 1 or not door 1? Now we see from the question that the probability of picking door 1 is P and not door 1 is 1 minus P. So we can put in, put, put in those for these two probabilities. What remains is to look at the expe conditional expectations. Remember this form is con conditional expectations. However, for the problems, we can use the structure of the problems often to write this thing down pretty much straight away without doing any extra summations or integrations. Now, what does it mean to say the mean number of goes to pick door uh, 1 given that 1 is picked? Well, that means is already that means it picks door one and that's one go and the game ends. This one here, if door one is not selected, then you've taken one go and then you return to the start of the game. So here, pick door one ends. We do not pick door one. You've used up another go and you're faced with the same situation and given that you've forgotten what's happened before it's like it's never happened so you're asking yourself again the same question the game has reset so we're using a structure here of uh, like a, a recursive thing which is like uh, same on each trial and that kind of helps this thing that helps solve this problem uh, using this method quickly so let x star be that one is picked on subsequent subsequent trials sorry yeah so if it's not picked on this one it's picked on subsequent trials then this is if you don't pick the dawn right door one on this occasion you've used up one go plus and then you're facing the same scenario again so the mean of uh you you then need to calculate the mean of the one the door one picked on subsequent trials But we said that each go is like the game is reset because you've forgotten what's happened before. So the that means the distribution of x, the number of goes, and x star, number of goes and subsequent trials are the same. Because they're the same, it means they have the same mean. So we just substitute into here and solve. So the mean of x is the same as the mean of x star. Let's call that mu. Mu, mu, substitute out the mu's. That's like the cat meowing and uh, rearrange for the mu's. Mu, let's see. And I think you can see you can get this. So it's 1 over p, exactly the same answer. Now you might prefer method 1 after reading the 2 because of the direct method. But now look at the problem here posed by Ross. If you try to use method 1 you're going to get really stuck. This time um, the x is the number of uh, days it takes to reach to safety and why it's a bit more difficult here is to do it directly is because when you ch do not ch choose the right one th there is different implications so if you choose door 2 or door 3 you kind of return back to the same situation after a different number of hours traveling through through the wrong tunnel so for this one you're going to find that the power of the law of iterated expectations and method 2 and have a go tell you the answer is the, the mean number of uh, length of time until this miner reaches safety is 
10, 10 hours. So have a go and see if you get that.